So next, excited to present um, Shamila from Hot Uganda, um, who is going to be talking about um, her experiences mapping with refugees and underrepresented communities. Um, so please welcome her. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shamila, and I work with HOT in Uganda. I thought, sorry. I think you need it higher. Oh, hi. Okay. Thank you. In the middle? Or, okay, let me just. Is that better? Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about how we've been engaging with our community in Uganda. This year we released, HOT released its 2021 strategic plan, which, just a minute, sorry. Uh, so that there's 2020, 2021 strategic plan, which involves the goals of HOT. We want to make sure that everyone is counted Map data is accessible and used, and everyone can engage and contribute to the map. This had me thinking, how can we have everyone contributing and engaging to the map? So I thought I would share how we have been doing this in Uganda, which is through our community engagement. So our community engagement, I'm going to talk about our views and lessons, the things that we have tried. These are methods that have been tried and tested and I think approved. So hopefully you can also share them and try them back home. Uh, so how most of our projects are usually community oriented. We try to make sure that we use the locals themselves to map their communities because they know these places better. So a practical training uh, before we actually go out in the field, we make sure that people know how to use these tools, people can edit and contribute to OSM. So we teach them tools like uh, how to edit OSM using JOSM and ID Editor. They also learn how to use the mobile data collection tools like uh, ODK and Open Map Kit and OSM AND. So just up there is a picture of uh, refugees in, sorry, refugees in the Kivale settlement. In the training, we have the team, the Ho Chi Ganda team, uh, teaching everyone how to edit OSM. And just down, we can see the statistics of the number of different active users that we have had per district. These are the districts that we have been actively involved in, uh, Yumbe, Arua, Isinjiro, and Hoima. Well, part of it could also consist of the different uh, global community volunteers that have been participating in our, in our task and the tasking manager. So thank you very much if you, there's anyone in this room that has been participating. So, at the end, the other way to engage your community, at the end of your data collection, you want to make sure that you take back these, you take back the results to the community. You need to provide uh, an output at the end of the day because these are people that do not have access to computers, that may not be able to digitally uh, edit OSM. So a paper map is important and we always make sure that we provide these paper maps and also use them in case we need to update. For instance, you may find that during the data collection, there was a water point that was not functional or needed maintenance. So by the time you take back the maps, this has changed and someone has worked on it. So we update these maps with the local community themselves. We also, just down, you can see the local chief of one of the sub-counties. We were trying to find out uh, one of the projects that we were working with, with UNDP, which involved finding the disaster prone areas. For instance, when was the last time you had lightning in this area, say, or a drought for say, for that sake, and we actively involve the community. So I think, so in, most of our data collectors are usually people that already finished school so we, this had us thinking, how do we involve the young community members? So we went out to the refugee secondary schools because we went to the secondary school children because they are probably more advanced and more, and more, how can I say it? They are more, 
the more willing, not, sorry, not willing, they are more enthusiastic about uh, technology stuff as compared to the primary children. So we tried to involve their teachers in how best they could improve their geography lessons through adding OSM, incorporating OSM into their lessons. And uh, these are some of the pictures that we took during these processes. So the other key partner in the community that we want to involve is our partners, other NGOs and the local government. So during these trainings, we have partners also contributing to OSM because you want to make sure that you're producing actionable data that other people can use in their processes. So we organize tailor-made trainings that, for instance, you find this partner wants to involve OSM in their activities. This partner wants to add data to OSM. So we train them on how they can use OSM and other geo data in their programs and activities. Just in the bottom corner, we can see one of the maps that we made to integrate uh, how, how Arua district had reached or its level of attaining the SDGs. We can see a map that shows the water and health and education. Please visit, uh, we have this, uh, these maps and other visualizations in our atlas that is at the registration desk, so please pass by for any questions. Thank you very much. Okay, sorry. But just... <laughs> so I think what we, what we need to do more is uh, involve, involve these communities more, more regular mapathons, because sometimes after the project ends, we, do not, we may not have the funds to go back to engage them more. And we need to have more geodataizer trainings. Thank you very much.